Hello, dear friends. I'm glad to welcome you at the Moscow Aviation Institute admissions webinar on aircraft engineering. My name is Anastasia and I work at the International Department. Uh, today my colleagues will tell you about the largest field in our university about aircraft engineering. Let's welcome, uh, please welcome Mr. Igor Nazarov, head of Composite Materials Lab. Good afternoon. Uh, Mr. Alexey Zarechinsky, Deputy Head of the International Department. Hello. And Mr. Kirill Shukin, the founder and the head of uh, Moscow Aviation Institute Drone School. Glad to see you. On our today's agenda, we'll discuss the following. Uh, the future of high-tech industries, how the School of Aircraft Engineering raises its talents, and you will actually meet one of our talented international students, uh, what we teach and how to study with us. Uh, please, uh, please feel free to ask all questions below this broadcast. Our colleagues will try to answer everything. We will also highlight some of the questions uh, here. And uh, it's better to start with an introductory speech with one of the most uh, outstanding professors in aircraft engineering, Professor Alexander Yefremov. Uh, please welcome his uh, speech after the short video about Moscow Aviation Institute Technologies in Aircraft Engineering. Friends, the Moscow Aviation Institute was established in uh, 1930 and recently we celebrated 90 years of, of its foundation. For that period, uh, the Moscow Aviation Institute graduated thousands and thousands of uh, students who worked uh, and continue to work in the different well, uh, world known. Uh, companies like the MiG company, like the Suhoi company, like the Tupolev company. And we have the excellent relationship with these people, with this company. Many of them, many of the famous engineers and scientists from this company, from the different research institutes, uh, worked in Moscow Aviation Institute partly. All our professors work on the projects for these uh, companies. Uh, many of our alumni uh, continue uh, to work in this company and works very and very successfully. Many of them work for the different companies because Moscow Aviation Institute gives the systematic knowledge and this systematic knowledge allows to apply this knowledge for the different problems. So many of them work in the economic Many of them were work in the, for the banks. Many of them work for the different uh, foreign companies. Our students combine the analytical rigor with uh, the uh, curiosity, playful imagination, and appetite for solving the hardest problems. There's several reasons why to come in Moscow Aviation Institute and to be the students of this institute. First of all, 
the first class professors who work here. The second reason that is uh, the excellent laboratories and excellent equipment which we have. We have the excellent large scale equipment which don't ha doesn't have the university or the universities in the Europe and in the United States. We have five internals. We have the several moving base and fixed base simulators. We have our own aviation center where we have five airplanes and all students of our first institute have the special course. We have, if we call it the flight practice where the students come to the our airfield, which is located 100 kilometers from Moscow, and had opportunity to control the airplane, like the second pilot. Also, uh, we can offer you two uh, options. One of them, to receive the training program in English, and the second option, that is to get the training program in Russian, in the last case, during one year, you will study Russian and then you will continue your education in Russian groups. In that case, you will have good opportunity to teach Russian and to communicate with the uh, students or future colleagues in the future programs. So welcome to our institute and we'll be very glad to see you here and to teach you. So I believe that you will find the correct solution and soon I will have opportunity to see you, to teach you, and you will be able to touch with the Moscow aviation community and to feel the warmest atmosphere which we have here. Goodbye. Thank you very much, dear professor. Uh, now we have got an overview about um, the technologies that will determine the competitiveness of uh, the future products. Uh, and now, guys, also we see your questions in this broadcast. Of course, we will. after we will discuss uh, what we have planned, we will answer everything you want uh, to know. And now we uh, would like to discuss uh, an interesting question. Professor Yefremov mentioned uh, composite materials as one of the future technology. And uh, Yikor, could you please tell us uh, how are they widely used now and what are the prospects uh, in relation to aircraft engineering? Thanks a lot, Anastasia. Uh, once again, good afternoon, dear future colleagues. Now, speaking about the uh, composite materials application in the modern passenger and military aircraft's airframe, they uh, stand for up to 80% of the total mass of the uh, primary and secondary structures, including the uh, fuselage, including the uh, wing box and the uh, uh, movable surfaces, including the empennage, including the interiors, the floor panels, and all sorts of uh, latches and uh, body fairings. Now, uh, these materials are, at the moment, uh, maybe not so, well, uh, not so well examined, not so well known as the uh, traditional metallic materials that are used in the uh, air, uh, aerospace industry for the last 100 years. So now we are mainly working on the improvement of the uh, behavior of the uh, structures after damage, on the behavior of these structures with the repairs, and on the enhancement of their fatigue life. So, well, basically this is uh, the biggest issue we are facing so far, and it's the same everywhere in every foreign and national uh, aircraft manufacturer, both civil and military. So uh, in case you enter uh, the program in MAI, we'll be teaching you how to model the behavior of materials of uh, 
coupons, subcomponents, structures on every level of the so-called building block uh, approach pyramid. Uh, we'll be looking at how to uh, perform certification of these structures, what are the requirements, uh, how they differ from country to country. Uh, maybe we will also uh, look at a bit of material science and uh, at a bit of uh, manufacturing technologies so that you could understand what the differences are in between the uh, uh, Pre-preg, uh, resin infusion processes, uh, maybe press forming. So all the technologies which are uh, the mainstream now in the Boeing, Airbus, uh, Embraer, and uh, the Sukhoi civil aircraft uh, airplanes. Well, this is pretty much it. Thank you. Of course, thank you very much. Uh, actually, some students are writing in this broadcast that you pretty look like Elon Musk. So um, probably you are the next one in this field. Um, can you please uh, share with us uh, what are the largest projects in composite materials? If you can, of course, share and how MAI is broadening its reach in this field. Okay, okay. so first, thanks a lot for that comparison. After the Crew Dragon was launched, a couple of my friends have sent me the uh, picture of Elon Musk saying it looks pretty much like you, so yeah, I've already heard that. Speaking about your question, MAI is participating to all the uh, ongoing passenger aircraft programs in the uh, Russian industry, including the uh, Suhoi Superjet 100 and its new modification including the MS-21 uh, medium haul aircraft and including the uh, international Russian-Chinese uh, CR-929 uh, wide body aircraft. So uh, apart from that, we are also looking at employing our knowledge in the uh, spacecraft technologies. So we are beginning the talks with the uh, Russian uh, Spaceship Manufacturing Corporation. Apart from that, we're also looking at the uh, shipbuilding industry. Obviously, there are specialized institutions in uh, that area, but we are trying to see if we can do something to help. Uh, and finally, we're looking at the automotive industry because uh, this is probably the uh, biggest, uh, let's say, consumer transport product industry per se. So uh, we're trying to find some fields of application in the uh, both, uh, let's say, medium to low price uh, vehicles to expensive and exclusive uh, cars which are manufactured both in Russia and abroad. Thank you very much. It's pretty interesting. Uh, guys, as you can see, uh, this uh, area is really broad and it should not be limited to only like aircraft engineering. Um, also, one more area that was mentioned by Professor Yefremov is uh, unmanned aerial vehicles. Uh, Kirill, uh, I know that your uh, school is mainly about students, uh, but uh, in general, could you please shortly just give us an overview what are the prospects of the UAVs, because it's one of the most interesting uh, areas for students for now. Yeah, uh, so we start uh, our program three years ago. It was a small group of only three people, and nowadays it's uh, more, uh, like uh, 10, 12 uh, students of MIE and we start some uh, really serious uh, programs like uh, unmanned uh, drones uh, which can fly uh, some areas and like forests and uh, f can found some lost people yeah and um, uh, many students uh, not only from Russia, from other countries, they come to our school and they um, learning uh, new featuring uh, f uh, new um, programs and um, they think that UAVs it's a real future of uh, aviation. Uh, more. 
thank you. I think uh, it was quite interesting for, for, for you to learn. Um, also, maybe um, uh, because you have also told us many interesting things, but could you please just sum up for students, what are the prospects uh, for the nearest 10 years? Maybe um, we will widely be using composite materials, I don't know, in our sports life or like anywhere else? Obviously, yes. In my opinion, during the next 10 to 15 years, composite materials will uh, develop as one of the most widely used construction materials in every field of life, including the construction, so the buildings, including the offices, the apartments, etc. Obviously, the sports equipment, including all sorts of uh, skis, snowboards, um, skateboards, uh, tennis uh, rackets or whatsoever. Obviously it's the medical field where all sorts of uh, no, basically uh, implants will be made including uh, composite materials, probably uh, microelectronics. So uh, wherever you go in case you will be the construction engineer you might face the composite materials with all of the challenges that they present. So uh, if you're interested particularly in the uh, aircraft industry, uh, I'd say that the uh, projects which are going to be implemented in the nearest 10 years will include in Russia the uh, uh, Suhoi Superjet Mu-210 with the uh, composite wing and empennage. Uh, the uh, Russian-Chinese CR-929 long-range wide-body aircraft, which is supposed to perform the first flight around about 2026. Uh, probably there will be uh, uh, modifications of the MS-21. And obviously there will be a series of uh, regional small passenger aircrafts with the uh, seat capacity of around 40 to uh, 60 people uh, that are now only uh, being considered. Speaking about the foreign industries, probably this will be the uh, modification of Boeing 787 of the Airbus A350 with the improved uh, performance due to probably the uh, uh, increased elongation of the wing. Uh, obviously it will be the uh, new generation of uh, medium haul aircrafts, so the uh, successors to Boeing 737 to Airbus A3, A320, uh, which will feature uh, more composite structures. So from wherever you come, I assume that you will have so much workload in the uh, aircraft industry or in any other industries uh, being a composite engineer. So I believe that this is a good choice for the career. Thank you. Igor, thank you very much. It's, it was really informative. Uh, guys, as you see, there are large uh, developmental prospects uh, for these technologies and we will further discuss how students can become successful in these fields uh, during their studies and um, unfortunately um, uh, Igor spent with us uh, quite little time, uh, but uh, further after the video, uh, we will meet uh, our student from the aircraft engineering school. Um, but it will be after. Uh, it's better to speak about the uh, about the area, about the field, and about the school after showing uh, the main facilities to you. So please uh, have a look at the excursion around uh, the school of aircraft. Uh, engineering and its main locations. Good morning, dear future students of Moscow Aviation Institute. I'm glad to welcome you at the academic building of the school number one, the School of Aircraft Engineering. My name is Anastasia and I'm uh, a representative of the International Department. Uh, the School of Aircraft Engineering has several buildings on campus and today I'll show you where the students of the school study, work and spend their free time. 
students of the Aircraft Engineering School have unique opportunities for the comprehensive development of engineering, management and leadership skills. The educational process at our school is based on the participation of students in real industrial projects and involves the formation of individual learning paths. School No. 1 is a large scientific and educational center with a developed research and experimental base. The interaction and demand for our graduates in the industry is a distinctive feature of our school. It also participates in the implementation of all significant Russian and global aircraft industry projects. To solve innovative technological problems, excellent centers are being created on the basis of the school. They implement large research projects, continuously generate new competitive technologies, competences and approaches. Areas in which the school number no. 1 specializes include mathematical modeling, aircraft design, composite materials, product life cycle management, unmanned aerial vehicles, life support systems and aircraft equipment, aviation equipment certification, helicopter design, design technology, airfield maintenance service, quality management, human-machine interaction systems, aerodynamics and multidisciplinary optimization, system analysis and management. Our university promising projects are being implemented in this location. Various students' hackathons, master classes and student meetings are held here. It also houses a division of the Moscow Aviation Institute IT Center and a life cycle management laboratory. This laboratory is engaged in supporting the life cycle of products based on the team center, developing 3D models as well as digitizing design documentation. Now we have got to the seventh floor. There is the dean office and the lounge area. In addition, now I will show you the labs of the Department 101. Let's walk around and see what's going on there. Now it's quiet in here, as in all rooms of our university, but during the working hours, scientific life here is in full swing, and now you will be able to see it yourself. Moscow Aviation Institute Mathematical Modeling Center is a technological platform for breakthrough research development, creating and implementing new technologies related to the design, testing, certification and operation of aerospace equipment. The use of supercomputer technologies and mathematical modeling can significantly reduce the time needed to create advanced samples of equipment by reducing field testing and implementing digital duplicates and managing the product life cycle. The center has a supercomputer with a capacity of 152 teraflops. Also, the school number no. one operates a research laboratory of flight simulators and the aircraft pilot system which is designed to simulate a wide range of manual piloting tasks. Not only scientific experiments are conducted here, but also laboratory work and practical classes for students. The laboratory has three flight simulators, which differ from each other in the visualization systems, the cabin and the lever loading system. In 2018, the Center for Unmanned Aerial Vehicles was established in Moscow Aviation Institute. The MAI UAV Center solves problems related to the development, application and formation of requirements for UAVs. Customers and partners of the Center for Unmanned Aerial Vehicles MAI work on the creation of UAV complexes is carried out throughout the entire cycle, starting from the modeling of application systems and ending with the production of individual onboard systems and the device itself. MAI students are actively involved in working on promising projects. Experimental studies of aircraft of various types and purposes are being held in the MAI Aerodynamic Laboratory. Research is performed at both subsonic and supersonic flow speeds. Also, the Moscow Aviation Institute Aerodynamic Laboratory performs research related to the flow of vehicles and structures, as well as the study of air currents inside buildings in urban and rural areas. Now we are in the training laboratory of the Department 101 Aircraft Design. Here, literally under the wing of a plane, different lectures, practical classes and thesis defense are being held. Also, during the campus tours, everyone of any age can visit this facility. All graduates of the School of Aircraft Engineering have passed 
through training in this laboratory, which students call Hangar. Many of them are the backbone and heads of aviation helicopter design bureaus and enterprises of Russia. The Hangar houses not only aircraft, but also a huge number of their components and units. Most of them are dissected, as you can see, their internal components and details. Thanks to this, students can study the wing structural layout and draw from the real sample. This is how they form their understanding of the design solutions base of the world's best aviation schools. The first hull of the hangar houses MiG-23 and Yak-38 aircraft. These aircraft were developed at the same time for similar tasks, but they performed these tasks differently using breakthrough technologies of the 60s and 70s to reduce the requirements for the availability of infrastructure. The first production aircraft in the USSR – vertical takeoff and landing Yak-38, aircraft with variable wing geometry MiG-23. The variable geometry wing allows you to improve the takeoff and landing characteristics of the aircraft, namely to reduce the landing speed, make the landing of such a walker smoother and softer, so that the aircraft can be landed on absolutely any runways. And when an aircraft needs to fly at a maximum speed twice the speed of sound, the wing panels fold up, thereby reducing drag. The speed becomes achievable. And the Quant aircraft, built in the Moscow Aviation Institute Student Design Bureau, which set five world records and is the best in its class, but was not built in series, and now the only sample of it is this exhibit. In the first room, uh, there are aircraft developed before the 70s. The second room of the lab, where we are now moving, is the hall of modern aircraft, which are in operation not only in Russia, but also in a number of neighboring countries, the CIS, India and China. Behind me, there are planes that fly over the Red Square every year on May 9th on Victory Day. Our famous sports aerobatic groups Swifts and Russian Knights fly on Su-27 and MiG-29 aircraft. And now, pay attention to the most formidable, heavily armed and performing combat tasks every day around the world, a flying tank, the Su-25. They are trying to ensure peace in Syria by wiping out terrorists from a large number of types of weapons. It was on this plane when the hero Major Filipov was shot down on February the 3rd of 2018. The nickname Rook uh, this plane received not by accident, as well as the Rook bird, after it arrives and picks out worms, remains a ploughed field. The cockpit of the F-111 is remarkable for its pilot rescue system. Usually, pilots are ejected using ejection seats, and the American school decided to go further and make a fully ejectable capsule with a cabin, which provides the highest level of comfort in critical situations, but has a negative side, such as an increase in the weight of the aircraft structure and, as a result, a decrease in combat effectiveness. It is presented in front of you. Whether this has been continued in modern aviation? No. Everyone has also remained on leaving the plane with the help of seats. But this solution is interesting. It is considered special, so it's located in our training laboratory. At the moment, we are in the training lab of the Department 102, Helicopter Design. The Helicopter Design Department trains staff for the Russian helicopter company holding that unites all Russian industrial helicopter production companies. It should be noted that the samples of equipment located within the walls of the Moscow Aviation Institute are quite unusual. Most of them are pre-production or experimental samples, which often became champions in flight technical characteristics. For example, the Mi-2 that you can observe is, is the second production model of helicopters of this type. At one time, three world speed records in its weight class were set on it. You can also see the Mi-24B attack helicopter. Modifications to this machine have proven themselves during the fighting in Afghanistan, South Ossetia and Syria. These are not only domestic models of equipment in this lab, but also foreign ones. Vivid examples of such samples are Vietnam Trophies Hughes 369 and CH-47 helicopters Chinook. The latter has such an impressive size that it had to be disassembled, leaving only the most important units for training. 
So that's all for today. Actually, it is the smallest part of our university. So when you come to Moscow Aviation Institute, you will be able to see everything in full scale. Thank you very much for your attention and looking forward to seeing you with us. Glad that you have jointly with me visited all the main locations in aircraft engineering school. Uh, as you have seen, we're trying to make uh, our facilities uh, comfortable and convenient for you uh, to foster the development of students. And now, uh, please welcome our student from Congo, Zoe. He studies at Moscow Aviation Institute at the fourth year at the aircraft engineering school. Good afternoon. Um, Zoe, could you please... Um, Tell us, so why have you chosen uh, our university? Why you did? Why did you decide to come here? Well, first, uh, I think I like Moscow. I like Russia, <laughs> uh, and my is one of the best university in Russia uh, regarding uh, aircraft engineering. That's the main reason why I came uh, here. Cool. Thank you. Um, actually, uh, Zoe is not just a simple uh, student. He is considered as uh, a talented uh, student. And uh, I know that you're currently uh, working at the Professor Yefremov's lab. Could you tell us what are you doing here? How did you get to such a prominent professor? And what is what do you like in here? And maybe you don't like, I don't know. Um, well, that's kind of a difficult question. Uh, I started working with Professor Yefremov about three years ago, when I, after my first uh, year at MAI. And I think he saw some, something in me, I guess. Um, and now I'm, a, I'm an engineer in his uh, laboratory, the Pilot Vega Laboratory, where I do research in modern control theory. Uh, with a special emphasis on um, the robustness of the control systems and the fact that those systems are going to be controlled by human pilots. Yeah, that's what I do. And yes, I, I do like it. It is interesting and uh, it's a nice opportunity to learn uh, from a personal point of view and from a professional point of view. Thank you. Um, this is mainly related to the questions, uh, can uh, students work uh, with our professors? Can they have their internships? Of course they can. If uh, you're talented, of course you will be considered. And also, Kirill, I have heard that you have many students from aircraft engineering school working at your drone school. Uh, what um, additional value is given to them uh, uh, when participating in your like projects, and why um, do they choose it? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, as I know, many students, especially from the first faculty, uh, come to our Moscow Drone School, uh, and they can start some their own projects. Yeah, and they can. Mm, study some special programs and they can choose in uh, in the, their future which uh, what they can make uh, better with uh, some future aircraft yeah maybe in uh, work uh, like Zoe work at uh, first faculty and he can come to our drone school and uh, maybe in future, he wants to make his own project, uh, maybe not only with aircrafts, maybe with uh, UAVs. Yeah, and uh, we can give him some special knowledges. Yeah, uh, which our students uh, uh, studied every day. Uh, and I have a question for Kirill. Can I ask, uh, can international students participate at your drone school? Because I think it's a serious activity and uh, for guys uh, spending time here, it's not just the education, but I think it could be uh, really interesting and they would be involved uh, in uh, work with uh, Russian students. So can they take part in this uh, school? Yes, of course. And we especially we have uh, more 
uh, foreign uh, students in our school uh, much more than the Russian. I don't know why uh, it's so, but uh, the foreign students um, come to our school um, two or three times uh, more than our students. Yeah, mm. I think. Uh, Possibly it's because the foreign students, they are more um, wide open because they already chose another country to go and they want to know everything what's happened here. I think maybe it should be the answer. Maybe, but uh, we start in last year a special program only for foreign people. And uh, maybe in this year or maybe next uh, we make some uh, uh, groups uh, with also Russian and foreign people. Great. Well, that's cool. So, Zoe, if you have some friends interested in UAVs, you can bring them to Kirill and he will take care of them and educate them. Uh, thank you very much. Um, also, we saw some questions related to the PhD programs, to admission. Um, as I have seen, my colleagues have already answered. Also. I'd like to remember that uh, in the end of this broadcast, Alexei will tell you everything you need to know how to apply, how the, uh, I don't know, how to study with us and everything. Uh, also, but now, could you please shortly give us an overview about the exams? What, are, uh, what um, exams you need to pass to come to aircraft engineering school? Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, if you want to apply for our bachelor or master's programs, you should uh, pass online exams. Uh, for example, for bachelor program of aircraft engineering, you should pass math and physics. Uh, the same for spacecraft engineering and for propulsion engineering. If you apply for IT program, control systems and computer science and engineering, you should pass math and IT. Uh, if you apply for master's degrees, you should pass the exam according to your program. For example, aircraft engineering, you should pass the aircraft engineering exam. And also, we often have a question if um, a student who has a diploma in mechanical engineering, can he apply for aircraft engineering master's programs? Uh, yes, he can after you pass the exam. It's not a problem. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, also, as we have started uh, discussing like additional opportunities for students, we'll further actually continue with it. Uh, I'd like to say a few words that uh, MAI is currently developing the double degree programs with the leading Chinese universities. Uh, they include Shanghai Jiao Tong University, uh, Zhejiang University, um, Beihang, Nanjing University of Aeronautics and Astronautics, and uh, some the Northwestern Polytechnical Universities and some other. And uh, now one of uh, the students of this program uh, will share his um, experience with us. So please have a look on the screen. My name is Xu Hao and I came from a small town of Anhui province uh, located at Eastern China. At first, why I choose this double degree program and why I choose my EE? First of all, I have always dreamed of studying abroad. And when my supervisor told me that there was a chance to study in Moscow, I was excited. Nevertheless, this is a double degree program. That means you can get an extra degree without spending extra time. Second, I got a bachelor degree uh, in aircraft power engineering in China and I want to continue my study. Mai is the leading uh, aviation college in Russia, and many people who work for China Space graduated here and uh, made great achievements. Third, uh, Russian language is difficult, but you don't need to be too afraid of it. This is an English program. And that are the reasons why I choose Mai and uh, this double degree program. What I like most in Mai? Well, I would say that's the lessons. Some aged professors who did excellent work in their area, and they are willing to uh, share their exper experience there, and they are willing to answer your questions. Wow, I really appreciate their 
works and I really admire them. What I like most in Russia? At first, I would say the beautiful sceneries. I have been in Moscow to see the uh, museums and the Red Square there, and I have been in St. Petersburg to see the church and uh, the open bridge. I have been in Murmansk to see the aurora there. Second, the food here is tasty. Uh, ice cream and uh, the milk. In Russia, they are called uh, Malojne and uh, Malago. Uh, they are tasty. Third, uh, I would say uh, the most uh, I like in Russia is the friendly people. Your classmates, uh, your people, the people you meet, and the people who work for the International Student Office. They are always, to, they are always uh, uh, willing to solve your problems you meet. Thank you very much. Uh, as, you, um, as you have probably understood, we have a large student body and you can meet uh, students nearly from all over the world on our campus. Uh, now, please uh, welcome Ms. Alena Tikhonovets uh, from the Department of Aerodynamics. We have seen there were like requests to see her, so please, you can <laughs> see her. Hello, everyone. Uh, now, uh, I think she will tell you about the educational process and what we teach. Uh, what are the key disciplines in the aircraft uh, engineering field? Uh, so, uh, as for me, I teach aerodynamics. And, uh, of course, I think every teacher can say that uh, his subject is the most important. Uh, but uh, actually, of course, uh, there are several other uh, disciplines. Um, as far as I know, it's um, basically aircraft engineering itself. Uh, it's uh, composite materials and uh, some other subjects that will help uh, our students to become, um, well, starter specialists, I'll, I'd call it that, <laughs> yeah, in uh, aircraft engineering. Oh, thank you. Um, also, I think the students will be interested how uh, the main professional disciplines are taught um, during uh, are taught uh, at the school. Uh, is it uh, like uh, practical oriented, or it is mainly the theoretical? Uh, in fact, we have um, a compilation of both uh, theory and practice. Uh, it is very important that uh, we, um, uh, even during the, um, <clears throat> even during the online process that we had to uh, apply to, uh, we uh, study, um, we uh, teach. I'm sorry, we teach. Um, we have some lab works. Uh, we have several laboratories that uh, can help our students to, like, um, um, to see and to touch, to feel what they do um, in aircraft engineering, in aerodynamics. For example, we have several wind tunnels that uh, are switched on for the students, and they can uh, perform some calculations and stuff. Uh, the theory is uh, shown. Um, uh, is uh, teached uh, during um, classes and also we have some practical uh, classes, uh, for example, for problem solving or something like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Um, Zoe, you are actually at the fourth year now. Sorry, it's like unplanned <laughs> question. Uh, you're at the fourth year now and how, what can you say about your studies? Uh, did you have like practical experience uh, as uh, Miss Alona said? Uh, were you able like to uh, have many technical drawing skills during your previous studies? Um, yes, I did have a lot of practical experience uh, starting from the first year, uh, as you said, classes like drawing, technical drawings. There were a lot of practice on uh, computers by hand. Uh, starting from my second year, uh, when I started working with Professor Yefremov, um, I started having a lot of practice because uh, it is a laboratory with uh, a lot of simulators, with a lot of computers. And uh, that's where I got pretty much uh, most of my practical experience. And uh, some practice I got during my internship in in France at mm -hmm. uh, is a super era. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, that's uh, good that you have mentioned it. Uh, could you please tell us about your internship uh, in uh, Toulouse, in one of uh, like top universities in Europe, uh, related to aircraft uh, engineering field? Um, yes, I first went to Superior, uh, like um, something like an exchange program between uh, MAI and Superior. And when I got there, I got a, an opportunity to do an internship uh, in control control theory. Of course, that's my that's my field, and it was quite interesting. I worked there for uh, more than seven months. Uh, designing control systems for a new uh, vertical takeoff and landing aircraft that they were developing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you. I'd like to also add uh, that um, uh, Zoe was one of the students who spent uh, one semester abroad and this is the opportunity for all students studying at MAI. Uh, you can, uh, at your senior years, you can have an internship in one of the partner universities of Moscow Aviation Institute. Um, they include like the leading European universities such as Technical University of Munich, uh, Isai Subairo, um, Technical University of Vienna, Politecnico di Torino, and uh, the Chinese universities that I also mentioned uh, previously. Uh, they are also our partners for academic exchange so uh, you should like never limit your you know, experience to only one university because uh, MAI is also willing to give you as much uh, as uh, uh, it is possible. Um, also, Alona, could you please um, tell our students about um, the amount of uh, like professional disciplines in relation to like core disciplines and uh, like electives? Uh, how uh, just just as you for your experience working on the School of Aircraft Engineering, is it like? Uh, um, is uh, professional disciplines are more on the senior years and what should student expect? Uh, in the first years, you should expect the basics. So, uh, in fact, there will almost be uh, none of your uh, future speciality because you need to know all the basics. Uh, that is why the aerodynamics is, teached, uh, is taught um, during all um, uh, during the first courses for almost uh, all of the students uh, because it's one of the basic uh, disciplines. But later, as you go through your course, you are able to um, start um, visiting your uh, laboratories, you are able to uh, meet your uh, future professors, your maybe uh, your even future supervisors, and so on. So I'd say that uh, the more you study, the, uh, the more uh, core subjects you have. Thank you. Thank you very much. Because sometimes students uh, come to the first year of studies and they expect that they will be working in the labs uh, from the September the 1st. Um, also, there is a, a like, uh, general question from one of our students. So, Lexi, maybe you will uh, give us a highlight. Um, is MAI a good place for students looking for opportunities in aerospace sector? Mm. For sure, you you know, as uh, MAI is the largest university in Russia of that kind, uh, which is focused on aerospace industry and uh, one of the most respected in the world. So you may see that uh, right now at MAI study more than 20,000 students and among them around uh, 1,300 international students. So. I think it showed that we are in demand and uh, we are recognized all over the world. So for sure, this is one of the best places to study aeronautical engineering. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, uh, now, I think we will put more emphasis on the uh, entry examination uh, procedure. And uh, we will discuss all the relevant questions after the presentation that uh, Mr. Alexi will now do for you.
Thank you, Anastasia. So please let me guide you through the admission procedure of Moscow Aviation Institute for foreign citizens. First of all, I would like to mention that we have all levels of education, uh, bachelor's degree, master's degree, PhD, and uh, four main programs are available for bachelor and master's degrees in English medium. These are aircraft engineering, propulsion engineering, control systems and computer science and engineering, and spacecraft engineering. Tuition fees for all the programs in English medium are the same. It's 6,000 US dollars. But if you want to study in Russian language, because uh, maybe uh, the program which you want to study at isn't available in English medium, you can go to Russian medium programs. Uh, in this case, the price depends on the level of education, as you may see here. And usually students who study in Russian language before that arrive and spend one year at a preparatory course where they study Russian language, math and physics. So, when to apply for studies? As you may see, the admission is already opened and uh, it will be opened till uh, September for English medium programs and English medium programs will begin the education on October 1st. And um, the admission is open till August for Russian medium programs because the education begins on September 1st as the same as for Russian citizens. You may think that you have the whole summer, but we strongly recommend you not to delay it uh, because some candidates sometimes face uh, difficulties with uh, bank transfers or maybe uh, with connection uh, at the online exams. So we strongly recommend uh, to begin the admission process in June or early July. So how to apply? A few steps. First, you send a message to int at mai.ru with your passport and educational documents. We check your passport, if it's valid, and if your educational documents are eligible, we send you an application form. You fill it in and send it back to us. We prepare the contract, where you can find the name of the program, duration, tuition fees, all this information. You sign the contract, send it to us, and choose the dates of exams, and pass it. After you pass the exams, if everything is fine, you can make a prepayment. Uh, after you made the prepayment, we prepare invitation letter and uh, meanwhile you can notarize your translation of passport and educational documents. And after that, we will send you the admission letter and since that time you are enrolled at MAI and we are waiting for you to arrive. Uh, so I think it's not that hard, uh, but if you will have some questions, you can always contact us. My colleagues will help you, will guide through all this procedure. So we're waiting for your messages. Thank you. Anastasia. Alexi, thank you very much. Uh, I think uh, it was pretty informative. So guys, I uh, I'm kindly advise you to save this broadcast and to refer to it in the terms of deadlines, procedure. And I think now we will discuss uh, the main questions uh, about the entrance examinations. How do our students pass them? How they can do this? Your colleagues? Uh, I think I can um, explain the situation. So uh, for a few years we uh, hold online exams for our students uh, from other countries. Uh, it's uh, pretty comfortable. Uh, you can sit at your home or maybe somewhere uh, with a good internet connection. Uh, you need to have your laptop with a camera. Um, so you have the schedule of exams, my colleagues will inform you, will choose the date when it's comfortable for you, and uh, you're sitting in front of your laptop with a camera. Here in Moscow, teachers sit and watch at you, and uh, after you pass your exam, you just send us a picture, and after that, we think, I think it takes about a week to check your uh, exams, and uh, we will inform you if you've passed or not. So it's pretty comfortable, and uh, you don't need to come in Moscow to pass the exams. And uh, this year we will try to do the same with Russian students because of the situation. And for foreigners, uh, we have a strong uh, infrastructure for these uh, exams. Um, Zoe, maybe you will 
like tell us how it was with you because you're like I think the best example of <laughs> how how to get enrolled to MAI while you were staying in, in Congo. Yes, uh, that was about four years ago, I think, when I passed my entrance exam. Uh, it was, as Alex said, uh, said, it was quite interesting. It was online, I was home, and yeah, it was comfortable, it was okay. And after about a week or a couple of weeks, I uh, got my um, admission later. Yeah, and, and your parents could like track what you were doing. <laughs> How good are you at the entry exam? <laughs> Um, another question um, is frequently asked by the students, I think, from Malaysia. Yeah, uh, can I apply for bachelor if I have O level? Alexia, also for you. Mm -hmm. yeah, if you have O level certificate or uh, SPM certificate, you can uh, go to college or to school in your native country to get an A level certificate or STPM because it's required for bachelor's degree, or Another option, you can come here at Moscow Aviation Institute for preparatory course in English medium, uh, which is the foundation course after which you can apply for bachelor's degree. Thank you. Um, I think um, due to the world's like global situation, many universities had to um, change the way they operate and some of the universities introduced uh, online education and I think uh, Arona was the um, participant of this process uh, from the side of a teacher so she can tell you about how it is organized at MAI. Uh, yes, actually we had um, to well, uh, to try the online education this year. And uh, I think it was quite successful because um, we had lectures. We had just the same classes as uh, uh, here at uh, the university. And uh, we had um, like... Uh, video lectures uh, online that were broadcasted just as this video, I think. And uh, also, uh, I already have um, taken the exam from my students uh, in uh, aerodynamics. And well, they were quite successful. I think that uh, this form of education is quite okay with us. So I think we will be able to um, enlarge it in the future. I also think it's like a way to the future because many universities will switch. Uh, Zoe, you are now at the first year. Are you preparing for your like thesis? Yes. Um, it will be held online or not? Yes, my defense will be <laughs> online. It will be in a couple of weeks. And yes, it will be online. So, <laughs> so that's yeah. a new way to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, can I add that um, uh, as the admission for uh, this year uh, is, um, we, we don't know how the situation will be in autumn. Uh, that's why for sure we will have, uh, right now we're working on a new program of online education for the first semester. Uh, because uh, as Aliona said, uh, now we needed to uh, create something uh, in a such uh, uh, not a long period, but now we prepare a brand new program, which is uh, on the much higher level. Uh, but we will be flexible, and if uh, the borders are opened, I think we will be able to see you here for the first year, or it will be online. I think it takes us about a month, a month and a half to realize the situation all over the world. So we will, for sure, we will be flexible. You will be admitted if you will not able to arrive here, and if you would like to arrive here, you will lose nothing uh, in the educational process uh, on the level of education. Thank you. Also, there are two interesting questions in this broadcast. I think we should uh, highlight them. The first one is um, the entry, the minimum entry, like percentage of the exam. Uh, how much points out of 100 students should get to pass the exam for bachelor and for, for master? Just mm -hmm. for Yeah, for, I think it's around uh, more than... 50% uh, but what is uh, also interesting uh, if you want to prepare for uh, exams uh, we will provide you with, with webinars 
uh, where the teachers, professors uh, shown how to solve the tasks of the exams. Uh, it will be soon available on our website, on our YouTube, and for sure you can ask my colleagues uh, to provide you with this information because you will see what kind of uh, exams you should pass and uh, how to do it. Mm, thank you. Uh, another question, uh, I'm not sure who is the right person to answer, uh, is uh, the preliminary, the student count for each discipline, how many students uh, generally are in one group and how many groups are in the in one flow? Maybe, I know, maybe... maybe. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I can just say from my experience that um, during the first uh, term there were like 27 students in one group of aerodynamics, but as far as I know, they are from different faculties and they are from different groups. So one group can contain from uh, like three to like 25 uh, <laughs> students, as far as I know, as far as I can see in the papers, in the exam yeah. papers. So uh, it, it is very different and uh, changes from program to program. Yeah, so it, it depends on the field, uh, so it can be a quite large group or or quite small. Um, I think uh, we have highlighted the main questions. I, ha I also see that uh, my colleagues are actively answering um, everything you ask. Um, maybe um, now we will discuss like um, nice and uh, questions interesting for all students uh, about free time, about student life, and maybe we will start with uh, Zoe, with your experience in Russia. How do you like this country? How do you find it? And uh, maybe Alexi will say a few words about uh, extracurriculum activities in our university. Um, well, it is quite interesting. I do like living in Russia. I remember before before coming here, uh, watching American movies, the way they portray uh, the typical Russian. I first arrived at the airport here, and it was interesting to see that nobody spoke Russian the way I imagined Russian would be in my head. And usually, the uh, Russians are portrayed to be not very sm nice, not very <laughs> not smiling all the time. But um, it is quite the opposite. They are nice they are friendly and it's it's interesting i i like living here it's a, and moscow is is beautiful it's a nice city and people are nice so yeah i do like <laughs> I like it <laughs> thank you uh alexi what our university offers students uh, for their free time mm -hmm. uh, we understand that uh, this period of life is very interesting and uh, it's not only about the education. So MAA has a large infrastructure. It's like a small city in Moscow. Uh, we have a campus, a um, uh, large territory with more than 50 different sports complexes. For example, you may do anything, soccer, football, rugby, anything. Uh, between our alumni, we have more than 60 champions in Olympic and uh, world champions in diff different sports. Uh, also, we've seen Kirill today, uh, you may participate in drone school. Also, we have uh, English um, classes where uh, international students communicate with Russian students. It's an uh, English-speaking club. Uh, it's now um, opening in uh, MAI. And um, we have everything to have a free time to, um, I don't know, Zoe, do you participate in something, uh, not just in education or working with Professor Efremov, but maybe some uh, life, uh, student's life in MAI? Um, yes, as you say, there are a lot of clubs for students, uh, a lot of sports. Uh, last year, I think, or two years ago, I was participating in a shooting uh, shooting club. It's quite interesting. I don't think you can have that opportunity in any other country. <laughs> um, and besides that, in Moscow, there were a lot of events for international uh, students or foreign uh, foreigners in Moscow, uh, especially language exchange meetings. Uh, that's not only at Mai, and uh, there were a lot of events all around Moscow where you can meet other foreigners, where you can meet other international students, or where you can just practice languages. So um, 
you will not get bored during your free time in Moscow. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, I think it was a very like light, uh, interesting event, and actually, I, I, me personally, I really <laughs> liked it. I hope that uh, you also enjoyed it. Thank you uh, very much, uh, dear colleagues, for your time, for your answers. Uh, uh, thank you, Zoe, for your precious experience in all areas <laughs> that we have discussed today. Um, and uh, we will be waiting you for our online exams and looking forward to seeing you in September. Thank you very much. See you with us.